So the whole concept of rusted restorations way back in the day was if you have a fresh restoration of a motorcycle or a motorcycle story. It doesn't have to be about bikes, just has to be motorcycle related. So to that end, I was motivated at Keith, Keith's uh, movie night in January. Cole Serafin was there at the last movie night. He brought his father's Rough Riders banner and he wore the Rough Rider jersey, that you know, the sweater. By the way, I didn't want to put this on earlier because this is mine from almost 50 years ago and it used to fit better <laughs> back then. But um, somebody was looking for a 77 Crest, they can't have it, it's on here somewhere. But uh, anyway, I was motored by Cole bringing it, the sweater and the Rough Riders. We all know, or you may not know, but the Rough Riders started around 1936. I won't get into the sort of details, but the MMC, as you know, that we're affiliated with and part of, founded in 1911, there was this fallout or discrepancy on racing, AMA licensing, the Rough Riders formed their own group, and most of those guys were hardcore racers. And so around 36, they started another motorcycle group. But a lot of those guys went off to World War II. Tons of them were veterans. And if you remember when we had Bill Watt and Joe Sadas talking about in the 50s, uh, Bill Watt was telling how he got kicked out of the club when the guys came back from World War II because he wasn't 21. He was like only 19, but he'd been a member of the Rough Riders for like three years or something. So they kicked him out. And uh, anyway, that's on one of uh, Don's uh, videos, I think. That's priceless now because they're both gone, right? Um, so the Rough Riders, they, they lasted probably well into the 50s. I, I can't pinpoint the exact date. I'm not sure Cole knows, but I'm going to say something like 58-ish, somewhere in around there. Today's Rusted Restoration story is about another life cut short. You remember that I wrote a story about Freddie Noakes racing at the Headingley track on his brand new 36 Norton, and he was the guy to beat that day. That was 200 meters to the left of me right now, two miners east. One of the largest race tracks in Manitoba was the Headingley track, because this is where the Manitoba Fair was before the Manitoba Exhibition opened up and before what most of us remember at the Polo Park after that. The reason being, it was here from the turn of the century because the streetcar came all the way out here. And they had like a big, one, maybe even a one and a half mile, one mile, like a huge track, half mile track at least, and bleachers that sat thousands of people. Well, when they moved to the Red River, to the ex, old X grounds, in whatever year that was, 30, somewhere around there, that made this a redundant place. Guess who took it over? All the racers, the motorcycle guys. MMC started running races here. Well, that sad day in 36, uh, our own Irv Lone was president that year, a former member of this club, uh, Freddie Noakes died on the turn right here at the front. And he had a horse rut and hit the wall and the MMC suspended all activities for the rest of that year in 1936. And there was literally hundreds of motorcycles in the procession uh, for that parade. When I wrote that letter, it got printed in the local paper and a lady phoned me up and said, uh, that girlfriend that you wrote about, that was my aunt. So I, I met that lady, and it's a small world when you get writing things. But today's story is about another life cut short. Not uh, a young bomber pilot who was just 21 years old when he was shot down over Germany. James Thompson flew with the RCAF. He was shot down April 27, 1942, flying a Sterling. And he's now buried, buried in the Kiel War Cemetery. And it, those of you that remember that time, a couple of years back, we did the Remembrance Day thing. We rode in down Sharp Boulevard, past all the airplanes, and we went in. Well, there's a monument in there telling from that squadron, I think it's the 420, uh, all the guys that died during World War II. His name's in there. So you can look for a James Thompson, no P. All right. So I'm not sure if you know about this, but my friend Jerry Holm, worked for the province of Manitoba. He was some, I don't even know what you call it, because he lived in Stonewall uh, uh, back in the day there, Rain Man. Uh, his wife was secretary at uh, Bobby Ben. He spent a good portion of his career renaming the Manitoba Lakes in Manitoba after World War II veterans that passed away during World War II. You all know it says 100,000 on our plates. Well, it's something like 97,000. We got a whole lot of lakes and most of them by the tens of thousands were just numbered lakes in the north. So Jerry went around took, taking all the names of the people, a Manitoba veteran from World War II, and there's a lake named after each one of those. 
And in the book is called The Place of Honor. It's in all our libraries. I pulled it out. That's what the cover looks like. It's called The Place of Honor. And it lists all the thousands of guys that died in World War II and uh, where their lake is located. I, I personally have an uncle who was killed at Dieppe and his lake is so far north, my cousin and I were too cheap to rent a bush pilot plane because it's like a two hour flight from Thompson. So um, there's a lot of people that have family connections. Ross Smith's here today, he's my friend. His wife, I think it was kind of an emotional thing, but his wife is the niece, niece of James Thompson, the guy I'm talking about today. And what, what Leaf's holding up there is his crest from the, from the Winnipeg Rough Riders from 1938. He was a 1938 member. And as I mentioned here in my notes, he probably shipped out in 39, like a lot of guys did in Manitoba. I mean, the Americans talk about they won the war, but they really didn't do anything until 42. Uh, we'd already had guys over there for two and a half years. Uh, don't get me started on that, but that's... Uh, so this, this chap was already shot down, as I said, uh, in April of 42. Uh, one thing I was gonna mention, uh, James Thompson's Lake, by the way, Ross, is it's uh, southwest of Churchill, and I looked it up, and it's behind, beside Sand Lakes Provincial Park. Now, I've never been there, but here's a map for you, and now you know where that lake is. So I'm gonna leave that up here. Sand Lakes Provincial Park. I think the only way to get to that provincial park is by airplane. But in Nanton, Alberta, I wanted to mention, in the last Legion magazine I was reading, in Nanton, Alberta, is the home of the Canadian Bomber Command Museum. And its records there show approximately, are you ready for this? 10,700 Canadian bomber crew members died during World War II. Flying aircraft, bomber aircraft. These men did not return home like so many of our former AMCM club members. Veterans like the Three Amigos. Those of you that have been here long enough remember the Three Amigos in the club. Irv Lowen, Spitfire Hurricane fighter pilot. Alex Grant, landed at D-Day, Grant Sergeant with the Camerons or something. Burt Bentley, well, the Burt Bentley Trophy, you know I've mentioned that before. Beach commander for the invasion of Juneau Beach. I mean, a lieutenant colonel. And then we also had veterans like Paul Barabo, who told me one time about how we stayed back in Czechoslovakia doing the land lease program for WLCs and all the, the bikes and all the military stuff they left behind. He, was, he didn't get home right away because he had to do paperwork for giving away all this stuff to the Czechs. Guys like Paul Barabo, he was our first uh, honorary life member because of his famous dad, Joe Barabo, the first man to do 60 miles an hour for 100 miles an hour at the Kirkfield racetrack at the end of Sturgeon Creek, where Barney Oldfield used to race around 1911, famous racetrack. And of course, we had other veterans in the club. We have people like uh, my own father, T.H. Metcalf, Len Hardy in the group. And of course, there were many other club members. The old MMC clubhouse had a list of members who served in World War II, stripped up on the wall. Sadly, it's gone now because of the fire. I think you remember that, Jim, seeing it there. I think Tiny Robin's name was the last name on that chart. But we lost that to the fire. We were able to save the Dunlaw Trophy over there thanks to some talented uh, members. But back to Jim Thompson, James Thompson. He was a member of the 38 Rough Riders and an AMCA Raider, racer. And that's, that's when you join the, AMC, a, a, the AMA, rather, that's the crest you got. Of course, there were many MMC and AMA racers as well, but uh, he probably shipped out in 39, never to return. And these are his crests. And I'd like to call Ross Smith up here to give these to his son, which would be the grand nephew, and then his wife, which is the niece. So, Roscoe, thank you. you want to take thank these you. back? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think he was on his way to bomb Stuttgart. yeah. Stuttgart. Yeah. And then his brother made it back. He fell. He was in Wellington, but he made it back and lived in California for many years. But anyway, yeah. Thank you very much. All right, very good. Well, I was hung on my basement for about 30 years for the last, you know, the 15 years we had movie night. You would have seen it hanging there, but it needs to go that's back right. to the family and right. we know who they belong to. So, thank you. That's the story of another young life lost, unfortunately. Awesome.